Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, you see where I am located. Um, we are as a unit set within the uh, Health and Social Care Directorate General, but uh, we report to education ministers. So my uh, prime minister is the Minister for Children and Young People, Angela Constance. So if one's mental well-being is set by having certain parameters and structures around one, I'm afraid that my working life might need to improve slightly. But this reflects the, the way within Scottish Government we're trying to operate now with a much more fo greater focus on delivering outcomes and the national performance framework. And this sort of matrix way of working, I think, helps us to work across boundaries and to deliver uh, improvements on those outcomes where we can have an influence. And I suppose in my area, unlike different parts of the office which are looking at children with disability, children with uh, particular needs, I have the child as my focus. What are we going to do to improve outcomes for children? And as you'll see from there, I work in children's rights and well-being. And one of the challenges I have is how does all this work that's been done relate to the program that uh, I have responsibility for? And picking up on Jeff's point, what I'm really trying to do as one of the ways government's working is promote change in practice at the individual level, the way practitioners work and think around children and work to improve their outcomes. So part of what I'll try and do is explain how these indicators link to getting it right. Derek will follow me looking at a curriculum for excellence and just to complicate matters, he reports to a different minister, Dr. Alistair Allen. The simple thing that links us all is that we're all trying to improve outcomes for children and young people. We're trying to ensure that as the child grows and develops, he or she is supported in the best possible way to achieve their potential. Now, whether that support comes through family, community activity, universal services, targeted services, the aim is to make the individual's life better. And we use this slide to say, you start off with the family. The aim is to work through the family to improve outcomes for children. As a need or risk grows, you may have different interventions coming in. And if there's an acute risk, you go straight to the outer part of the circle where you may need specific actions, say in child protection or for children's hearings. But the getting it right approach, uh, or GERFEC as I'll abbreviate to, um, really focuses on the individual. How do you plan, come together uh, to support activity that helps improve the child's outcomes. Our aim is to prevent problems getting worse, to build resilience in individuals, and where problems emerge, to ensure that action is taken as early as appropriate. And all of this fits in with the early intervention and the prevention agenda. Getting it right has a broader age range than the indicators. Uh, as as a, an approach, we start at pre-birth, run right the way through up to age 25. I'll come on shortly to proposals for legislation that might, in legislative terms, require us to look more at a different age band. But over the past six years, this approach has been promoted by the Scottish Government with support from COSLA and our partners as a way of working to bring about improvements in outcomes. Now, uh, I know some in the audience here have heard me before, sometimes several times, so apologies if I do a bit of an overview of the Getting It Right approach, but I think we need to understand that to see how our activity under GERFEC maps with the indicator set that's been launched today. GERFEC is very much work in progress. We've been pushing, developing the agenda over the past six years. I think there's at least another five plus years to go before we see this embedded in actual practice. Uh, we started with Highland, um, looking at how professionals, how systems needed to change to put the child right at the centre, to hear their voice, to work out how you streamlined planning processes to make sure that the child remained the focus and that uh, outcomes were improved. And we did that by working with the Highlands Community Planning Partnership effectively through the Chief Officers Group that brought together health, education, police, the children's reporter and the third sector. From that work, we developed 10 core components. They're up there on the screen. I'm not going to go through them all. But what we're looking to see happening on the ground is people working in a way that delivers on those 10 core components and reflects the values and principles operating under getting it right. 
Now, that's very high level and vague, so how do we translate that into something that is meaningful in practice? What are we looking to see? And there are six areas on the screen there. Some of them are process, but we will be looking to see a named person in universal services for every child and young person. We would look to see arrangements identifying where a lead professional comes together for a child where there is a need for multi-agency planning. We are looking to see this child-centre approach, this getting the voice of the child, keeping the child right at the centre in the way people are working and in the engagement of the families. And we look to see, for the national practice model, which I'll come on to describe, the approach is developing the well-being of the child and building resilience. And using an approach which draws together in a holistic view of the child an assessment of that child where they are at the moment and where you want them to be. I'll, again, we'll come on to how I see specialist assessments fitting into that. Now, the main aim of this is to strengthen, initially, universal services. To start with addressing the problems as early as possible, wherever possible, within universal services. But where the needs and risks arise and become more intense, then you need to coordinate activity. Part of the model under GERFEC, which we are encouraging, and this will have to come through in workforce development and training as the, and uh, uh, local arrangements as the approach becomes embedded, is practitioners should really ask themselves these five questions. Now, we set those out in 2008 in the guide. They were reinforced in June 2010 when we published an implementation guide around GERFEC. But the whole idea under this is to support early intervention so the assessment as a process is a, as a process and not a one-off event. You capture where the child is, but you come back and review. You check how you're making that progress to know whether, for the individual child, you are making a difference. Now, the child and the child's views have to permeate all this thinking and working, but critically at the heart of GERFEC is this concept of well-being. And uh, picking up on Tam's comment earlier about achievement, we've got that as one of the key segments in that well-being wheel. With safety, we've got nurture, we've got inclusion and respected, which is where we would see the rights agenda fitting in. The view is that each individual child has to be in the best possible place around those segments in order for, for them at an individual level to fulfill their potential. The outer ring are the four capacities in Curriculum for Excellence. So again, we're trying to show how action with the child will deliver an improvement in well-being and through that, uh, an improvement in outcome. And for each child, it will be different. A child with a disability may not be as active as a child without a disability. So what are we doing for that individual child to make their circumstances better? How are we improving their well-being, their ability to fulfill their potential and therefore improve the lot of children uh, across Scotland. If you want to read more about the rationale behind um, that approach, um, there's our website that is there, there are lots of publications there, but we're shortly going to be uh, publishing a piece of work done for us by Edinburgh University, which has taken those segments and looked behind them at a more specific level, or what are the particular indicators you might be looking for around an individual child, and how that might inform those segments. When we did the evaluation of the Highland Pathfinder approach, we began that process of looking behind what safety meant, what health meant, uh, what achieving for the child meant. And the work that we're going to produce shortly will go further beyond that, and we'll look at how an indicator will not only just support safety or health, but might read across all those indicators. I have to stress in talking about this, we're looking to the future and what I'm describing is might. We are working this through just now. And part of, I think, the importance of today's indicators is it provides a framework within which we think about the individual child's data that we capture and how it might then inform uh, the more population-based approach. And I think from what's been described, the, the surveys, the source materials for the indicators that are launched today, it may be fair to say these are population data. Um, and what we need to work through now is how the getting it right assessment and analysis around the individual 
can support a record of improvement in their well-being and their outcomes. And if we can establish a more consistent way of capturing concerns, recording information about the individual child across all agencies who are working with children, you may then begin to be able to aggregate the data from the individual children up into a locality, a geographical, a category of children approach. Uh, that would be uh, greatly assisted if you could achieve that electronically, but as I think many of us know, IT is a huge challenge. But the approach and the thinking about what it is we should be capturing uh, in each of our professions around the individual child is where I think the, the, the indicators launched today will help us take forward our development. I mentioned the national practice model. Um, I hope many of you in the room are familiar with it, but it takes the concept of the well-being of the child. Where is the child at at the moment from your assessment? What is it that's going on in the child's life that's preventing them to fulfill their potential and improve their well-being? So that's the My World Triangle, where you begin to assess the, uh, the, the circumstances of the child. You apply a resilience matrix, looking at what is going on that is positive or negative in the child's life, and then produce an action plan with an aim of improving the well-being where you see there is a deficit. And throughout this process, the child is right at the centre. The whole approach and way of working should be to capture the child's views, to engage with the child and the family, to involve them, to obtain their consent around information sharing, and so on. For a child for whom the universal services meet all their needs, that line would be running along right at the bottom within universal services. The child will see a midwife when born, they will see a health visitor, they will go to school, They'll occasionally see the GP, but most of the time the needs and the risks will be addressed by the universal service. But there will be circumstances where those needs and risks will rise slowly. They might rise dramatically if it's a child protection concern. And that's where the planning process that runs through the child's life will cut in. And above the universal service line is where we would see the lead professional being brought in to manage and coordinate all activity. At a certain point, you will have a plan of where you want the child to be in the future. In this case, we want them back into universal services. For a looked-after child who's going to be involved in uh, care throughout their life, that dotted line may well remain above universal. So for each child, it is different, but underpinning it is the planning process that uh, looks and draws together all activity. So we have the My World Triangle. And under GERFEC, we say that to plan for action, uh, an assessment and analysis is required. We never introduced an integrated assessment framework in Scotland. We did a lot of thinking about it, but the thinking has now informed the getting it right approach. Now, for some children, there will be very specific needs which will need additional specialist assessments or considerations, but they should always point back to that practice model that I, I mentioned, so that the overview of the child can be taken and any planning coordinated. So I think today's indicators that are launched are some of the very specific considerations that could be used by any practitioner working with a child, looking at their state of, I would say, well-being, today's context, mental well-being. And some of the data, as has been pointed out already, does not have a, popular, uh, a data source. Uh, and it may well be that in looking at the individual child and in discussing with the child where they think they are, you could use some of the indicators to inform your understanding of where the child feels. Do they feel respected, included, involved? We may not have that source, but part of the dialogue with the child and planning might help us begin to get a feel for uh, what is happening. So I think the mental health indicators could be considered as an additional tool in practitioners' boxes to help them take the earliest and most appropriate action, uh, just as the same indicators of risk are used. And with the resilience matrix, once we say the information has been collated, along with any other detailed assessments, uh, either individually within universal services or in a multi-agency environment, you then look at where the child draws support from or where there are adverse influences. And that becomes central to the planning process and how uh, assessment will help identify where the action is best targeted in order to improve well-being. Now, I've struggled trying to put this across. The slide isn't very uh, 
clear, but it, the approach should bring together specialists and people from all background. Um, it's like an airport where you've got specialist aircraft all coming in, but they're all docking into that airport and discharging passengers with a particular purpose. You're getting them from A to B. As a Star Trek fan, I prefer the concept of spaceships, but um, it's rather difficult to get one with a docking station. This is San Francisco Airport. But in data terms, each specialist assessment will have lots of data. Part of GERFIC is thinking, what are the key things that we, A, should be capturing through that data collection, and what do we need to bring together in the center uh, to inform uh, how, what the child needs and how we improve uh, their outcomes. I will uh, not go through these slides in any detail. There are benefits from this approach, both in outcomes for the child and better trust across agencies, uh, better um, outcomes and uh, releasing of resources. And we are in discussion with community planning partnerships across Scotland. Um, Chief Executives in Health under Cell 29 in 2010 were asked to plan for implementing GERFEC. So it is part of the agenda. It is a long change process, so it's taking time. And one of the things ministers want to do in the manifesto was to legislate not just on the rights agenda that we've heard about, but on a children's services bill to embed both the getting it right approach and support the early years framework. So part of the, what I've been describing around the well-being wheel, the national practice model, we are looking at over the coming months as to how we translate that into legislative activity that is going to push forward this agenda. Um, there are lots of materials on the government's website and through the, uh, the GERFEC website. So GERFEC's on its way, and Jane had a complicated slide. This one, I think, is as if not more complicated. But it's part of the thinking we're doing around how you take individual data about each child and aggregate that up so you can understand how every child is being uh, helped and improved. Today's indicators, I think, are very much, as I said, looking at a population level. But for us, how do you pick up the relevant bits of data that will inform perhaps the gaps in data that you have at population level? Around early years, there's work on the early development um, instrument that's looking at transition into primary school. What, when you are capturing information about an individual child, should we be capturing in the GERFEC approach that might inform that or the child's well-being? Now, I'm conscious that time is moving on. Um, so the early years is one of the big areas where we're doing a lot of work to provide indicators around that age group. Um, there are certain indicators that exist around uh, the approach, uh, both the mother or father's approach to the child, how the health of the child is being improved and developed. But how then do we take that and understand what's happening across Scotland and how the national performance framework is being delivered? And I think I'll come to an end here, just reflecting again that the getting it right approach, as we've heard elsewhere about the indicators, support a whole range of policies across the Scottish Government and what we are all wanting to do and achieve with uh, children. If you identify what's going on in the individual child's life, recognising that poverty might be the influence, what do you do as practitioners to address what you can? How do you bring other people in to address those circumstances? Um, we are tied in very closely to the early years framework, equally well, achieving our potential, and of course the whole parenting strategy that is uh, going to be launched uh, next year is uh, again part of the work that we're all tapped into. So getting it right is here. Um, I very much welcome today's set of indicators as a way of helping us think through further what data we should be capturing around the individual and how through that process, we might help fill in some of the gaps that have been identified. Thank you.